This is Math 151, Section 3.8. And let's consider a case where we had... And uh, you might recognize that that's a, that's a circle. And if I started to ask some tangent questions, uh, like, what's the tangent line of this at 3, 4? What's an equation for the tangent line? I would need to know the slope and everything. So what I would want to do is I would want to um, differentiate it. Right, like I'd want to do this, do it to both sides to find the uh, to find the derivative of it. Now, if I think about a, a graph, and I'm hoping to find the tangent line that goes through it, so I would need to know its slope and all that. So, like I said, I'm going to need to take um, I'm going to need to find the derivative of this thing. Well, this is easy. The derivative of a constant is just zero. Now, how about this? Uh, the derivative, and notice that we're saying in terms of x. So that's pretty easy. I can take the derivative of this. That's just that's just 2x. And now this y squared. Now, y is some... It's not x, right? <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I, I, I know that I can... Um, I'm going to think of this as like something to the second power. It's kind of like when we did the chain rule in that we, we let something fill in this. This isn't an x, so I'm not differentiating this, but I'm differentiating, differentiating something to the second power. So that would be two times that thing to the first power, differentiate that. But then I'm still, I have to take the derivative of that. So this would be derivative of, well, it's y. So the change in y relative to, to x. And that's actually what I'm trying to find. Remember my derivative change in y um, relative to change in x. So really, I just want to solve for this. Notice what I did. I took the derivative of both sides. That has an x in it, no problem. Take the derivative. This was something to the second power. So I took the derivative of that second power, and then I had to do like a chain rule with this. And then the derivative of that, well, that's change in y related to change in x. Now, this is what I want to find. That's my derivative. So I'm going to solve for that. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. 2y multiplied by that. So I could divide both sides by 2y. 2's drop out. So negative x divided by y. And there it is. And we just actually used a new technique. This is, this is implicit uh, differentiation, where we have something that's not a function. So it's not, it's not necessarily as easy just to go I'm just gonna take the I'm just gonna find the um, derivative of it but we just took the derivative of both sides we, we actually kind of do this like when I have something that says y equals uh, I don't know 3x to the fifth plus 4x cubed something like that and I want to I go like y prime of that or I want to find the um, derivative of that what I'm doing is I'm, I'm really just doing this of both sides And this is just change in y related to change in x. And then this is just taking my derivative, 15x to the fourth plus 12x squared. Like in everything we've done so far, it's been solved for y. It's been as a function. Not everything we deal with uh, in, in math or life is like that. So this is taken, uh, this is how we take care of it. So I know that the, uh, the derivative is negative x over y. So I've got x and y right here. So negative 3 fourths is my, my slope. That's my derivative. That's the slope of the line that I'm trying to find. And then since this is a point, I can use that uh, point slope form. y minus the y part equals the slope times x minus the x part. And if I, uh, I could leave it like this, I, I might, might fix it up a little bit. Distribute that into there. Negative 3 fourths x uh, minus 9 fourths Oh, oh yeah, that's plus. That's actually plus. Um, add 4 to both sides. So if I think about 4 in terms of force, that's 16 fourths that I'm adding here. So this would be y equals uh, negative 3 fourths x plus 25 fourths. Let me graph that and see if that works. And it sure looks like it does. That looks like the tangent line through that point. 
So my strategy with uh, implicit differentiation is take the derivative of both sides and then solve for dy of dx. Get this all alone. Now, getting this all alone is sometimes a little tricky. It takes some algebra steps, and we'll talk about some examples for it right now. All right, so we are going to find the derivative of this. In other words, we're going to cha find the, the change in y in relation to, D of, to the change in x. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. So this first term, notice this is a product, x squared times y. So I'm going to have to use product rule as I take the derivative of that. You know, I'm taking the, deri de the derivative of each piece in here, right, because they're added together. Derivative of the first one is 2x times the second one, plus uh, the first one times the derivative of the second one. Well, the derivative of this is dy over dx, plus... Uh, the derivative of x is 1, and as I get over onto the right-hand side, um, the derivative of y is change in y related to change in x. Derivative of negative 5 is 0. So I'm here. So notice now that I've got um, this dy dx in two spots. This is going to happen a lot. It might even be more than two spots. So my, my strategy is to get them all on the same side and then factor it out. So I'm going to get everything that has a, a dy over dx in it on the left-hand side and anything else uh, that, I, that I don't care about over on the right-hand side. So I'll subtract 1 from both sides, subtract 2xy from both sides, and I'll subtract this 1 uh, dy over dx from both sides. And notice this is an x squared of it, and this is 1 of it. So I, what I have is x squared dy over dx minus dy over dx. Okay, I got all of the things that I want to isolate on the same side. So what I can do now, notice since they both have it in it, I can factor it out. So I'm going to factor out a dy over dx, leaving me x squared minus, and if I divide it out here, a 1. And my last step is this whole thing is multiplied by that, so I'm just going to divide by that. And there it is. Um, and you might get this in different forms, like the 2xy and the 1 might be switched. Or maybe, notice if we factor a negative out of the top and factor a negative out of the bottom, we get that. Those are equivalent to each other. Multiply both top and bottom by negative 1. One quick note on notation. These look a lot alike, but they are saying different things. This is saying, take the derivative of this like this is an action right take the derivative of this this is getting derivated uh, this is saying this is the derivative and it's multiplied by that very different things so when the y is up here this thing is um, in a sense resolved this means the actual derivative this means take the derivative of it this is an action symbol um, this is kind of a verb and this is kind of a noun So two different equations that I would want to find the derivative for. And the directions would say find dy in terms of dx. Like this is telling us what our, uh, what our, what our term that we're looking that is running the changes, right? Like th it's in terms of x. So we're really safe. Um, if this is an x, like an x to the fifth, take the derivative of that, easy, 5x to the fourth. Now, if this term that's here is not in terms of x, like if it's a y, let's say it's y to the seventh, we can say, well, that's seven y to the sixth, but notice that's something that's not x to the seventh power. So we have to then say, and then the derivative of what was in there, it's like a chain rule, whoops, sorry. It's like a chain rule, and that is change in y with, with respect to x. This is really telling us, like, with respect to what. No matter what this was, we'd have to think of it in terms of the other thing. All right, so I'm going to take the derivative of both sides then. So this is a product, x cubed times that. 
So derivative of the first one times the second one plus, um, it's going to be times the first one, derivative of the second one, derivative of sine is cosine. And then again, um, this is y, this is not an x. So then I have to think of this as like sine of something. And so I'm using chain rule. Then I have to take the derivative of what was in there again, that y. So change in y relation to x. Plus the derivative of y, well, that's change in y with respect to change in x. Derivative of 4x is 4. Uh, derivative of negative 3 is 0. So it looks like I have two terms here that have the dy dx in them. I'm going to subtract this from both sides. leaving me and again I want to solve for that I got two of them so I could factor it out and then divide by this this is multiplied by dy of dx so I'm going to divide both sides by that and if I do that I'm there this is the derivative of this equation. Okay, same thing. I want to find the derivative of this equation. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. Okay, the derivative of this first term, that's just in terms of x. There's just one of them. So 15x squared plus, so I'm going to think of this then as um, I can take the derivative of 8x, which is 8 times y squared. Right, this is a product rule. And then I'm going to have, um, I have to take the derivative of the y squared, and it's going to be multiplied by the 8x. So the derivative of y squared is 2 times y. And then since that y is in there, again, think of it as a chain rule. And then I'm going to have to take the derivative of y with respect to x. And then over here on this right hand side, uh, that's all in x, so 30x squared. Sweet. Um, this 8x times 2y, I could know that that's 16xy. So um, I could subtract, oh, a 15x squared, subtract that from the 30x squared, 15x squared, subtract this 8y squared from both sides, leaving me 16xy times dy dx. Again, remember I'm solving for this. And these are all multiplied together, 16 times x times y times that. So I can divide by that 16xy. Now you can you can leave it like that. Um, your your book, um, some books will just do this division. So like this is divided. Both of these terms are divided by that 16xy. So it might you might see the answer written as uh, 15 over 16, this x and that x. So x minus 8 over 16 would leave you 2 in the denominator uh, and an x. This y would take care of that y. Like it might look something like like that. Uh, but it's, it's equivalent. E either answer is fine. Same game. Find the derivative of this. That's just in terms of x. So 20x to the fourth plus uh, tangent, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. So secant squared y. So I've peered, peer, uh, peeled away the tangent, right? Chain rule. I still have to take the derivative of what's inside there. Change in y in relation to change of x. Taking the derivative of y squared. So 2y to the first power. But then again, think chain rule because it's we're doing the derivative in terms of x, and this is a y. So change in y in related to x, plus um, the derivative of 5x is 5. All right, I got this. I got that. And I want to get them all alone. Um, I think I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. You could go either, either way. Like, you could put things on the left or the right. I'm going to put this stuff on the left. I'm subtract the secant squared from both sides. I can factor out that dy dx. 
And now this thing is multiplied by that, so I could divide by it. And I'm just going to switch the sides back so that's on the left. There it is. All right, one, one more idea. So I'm thinking about that problem from the, from the start. And we found the first derivative of that already. So we found the first derivative. It was um, negative x over y. So if I want to find the second derivative of this, well, I just take the derivative again. So this is written as that, second derivative. And then as I, uh, sorry, that should have been an x. And as I'm taking this in terms of x, I have a quotient. So remember for my quotient rule, negative um, derivative of the numerator, which is 1, times the denominator, minus just what the numerator is, multiplied by the derivative of the denominator. Oops over the denominator squared. So here's the deal though, I don't want to find the first derivative, I want to find the second derivative. But I know what this is, right? I used this. Notice right here, it tells me that that is negative x over y. So what I can do is I can substitute that in for it and get this thing all in terms of just x's and y's. So negative y minus negative x times the first derivative, which is negative x over y, all over y squared. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. So this, would, this numerator would be negative y minus, uh, plus, because it's a negative times a negative, x times x is x squared, x squared over y, over y squared. And that's, you know, that's a, that's a decent place. That's a good answer. I could actually even clean this up a little bit more. Yeah, I'm pretty good with this. You know, if you're in a test, you're pressed for time. Um, if I want to add these two, a common denominator is y. So this would be like y squared over, over y squared. Oh, wait a minute. Look at this sign. Minus, minus, minus. This is actually minus that. Three negatives multiplied together. Ooh, we. So my common denominator is y, right? Multiply this, this by y over y. So I could write this as negative y squared minus x squared over y over y squared, which that would be the same as divided by 1 over y squared, right? Uh, sorry, multiplied by 1 over y squared. So this is the same as negative y squared minus x squared over y cubed. And that's even better. Like that's in terms of x's and y's. Um, we don't have like this first derivative hanging out in there. That's really good. Um, if you get here, it's like, wow, man, bravo. But there's even, we can even go further. Like you, I just happened to notice that this numerator is the same as negative y squared plus x squared over y cubed. And y squared plus x squared, well, that's like our original equation. That's 25. So negative 25 over y cubed. Again, like, you know, you get to you get to here, you're in pretty darn good shape. You get to here, you're in really good shape. Or actually what I had was this. All right. Hey, uh, take a little bit of uh, a time. Go over the assignment. Look at solutions. Make sure you're feeling like you're getting it. Um, as you have questions, post them. This is... Uh, this is a performance skill you need to put in. Uh, most people need to put in the practice for it. Really, really, really do it. It's worth it. And um, man, again, I know I say this a lot, but I find it really rewarding. I think it's really fun, really fun to do.